Hello everyone, my name is Chlorophyll, but you can call me Phil. I'm from aquascapeguide.com, and today I was going to answer the question, what the heck is the EI method, also known as the estimative index. Well, the EI method is the most comprehensive, easiest, and least expensive fertilization method in the hobby. Yeah, you heard me. Best, easy, and cheap. Who wouldn't like that? Most people either don't know about the EI method or are intimidated by it because you have to mix your own fertilizer. To be honest, it's kind of cool. I feel like a chemist. But sometimes this is why we suggest starting out with Thrive All-in-One by Nylock G and then moving to the EI method. What makes the EI method so easy is we don't have to test all the individual nutrient levels because of the way the EI method was designed. The suggested recipe is designed in a specific NPK ratio. So all we have to do is test our nitrates, keep them around 20 parts per million, and we know the rest of our nutrient levels are exactly where they need to be. Awesome, huh? No more buying a ton of these little test kits and trying to juggle Seachem bottles at $15 a pop, wondering if we're dosing too much or not enough. And the EI method is so cheap that a kit around $35 can last you two to three years on a 30 gallon aquarium. Now it was designed for a densely planted high par CO2 injected tank, but you can even use this stuff on a low energy setup without CO2 injection as well. But we'll talk more about that later. This leads us to what makes the EI method so special? We've talked about this in our providing nutrients and what is the best all-in-one fertilizer videos, which you should totally go and check out if you haven't already. But the EI method is based upon Liebig's law of the minimum, which states, growth is dictated not by the total resources available, but by the scarcest resource. This means that growth will be halted if we're missing a nutrient, regardless of whether or not we have all the other nutrients available. Liebig used the image of a barrel with unequal staves to explain how plant growth is limited by the nutrient in shortest supply, just as the level of water is limited by the shortest stave. That means you could be dosing all the micronutrients and maybe one or two of the macronutrients, but if you're missing something like potassium, you'll stunt your plant's growth. From this perspective, we should dose all the different nutrients a plant could need, so the plants aren't like, dude, why are you so freaked out about nitrates, bro? They're almost at zero. I'm just gonna stop growing until you get me some. Spoiler alert, nitrates are a macronutrient. The nice thing about the EI method is it does this exactly. It provides everything in small amounts of excess to make sure your plants never run out of a single nutrient. Awesome, huh? Here's what's being dosed when you use the EI method. The macronutrients consist of nitrogen, phosphates, and potassium. The micronutrients consist of a bunch of little elements like magnesium, copper, iron, manganese, molybdenum, zinc, and boron. Now, if you're dosing a liquid fertilizer, pause the video, Go grab your fertilizer and look at the ingredients on the back. See if your fertilizer has the 10 compounds that are listed on the screen. Some fertilizers, like poor old API Leaf Zone, only have two of the nutrients listed on the screen. <sighs> what a sorry fertilizer. Another aspect that makes the EI method so special is it can be customized because we mix the fertilizer ourselves. Let's say you have a java fern or let's say a sword plant, which are known to be potassium hogs. We can just add a little more potassium into our mixture to make sure those plants are getting the special fertilization attention they need. Another common approach is for those tanks that have naturally high nitrate readings due to being heavily stocked with fish. We don't need to dose even more nitrates on top of what the fish are producing, so we can reduce the amount of nitrates we're mixing into our fertilizer and rely on our fish to produce those naturally for our tanks. Pretty cool, huh? So you're probably saying to yourself, this sounds awesome, but how do I do the EI method? It's actually quite simple. Nylock G, the makers of Thrive, also sell EI kits on their website. I'll put a link in the description below. Oh yeah, make sure you use the code ASG10 at checkout to receive 10% off your order. Shout out to Colin, the owner, for hooking us all up with that discount. You're my boy, Blue! The kit comes with three different bags of macro fertilizers, which are potassium nitrate, or KNO3, monopotassium phosphate, which is KH2PO4, and potassium sulfate, K2SO4. Don't worry about all these fancy terms. We'll talk more about them later. And then our micronutrients, which is just one bag of CSM plus B. These are all of our trace elements. Now you may get asked if you want a bag of chelated iron, but you can skip that for now. Now that we have our fertilizers, grab two of their 500 milliliter dosing bottles. 
We like these bottles because they have a little dosing chamber built into them. Then we don't have to deal with pipettes or syringes. So now that you have your salts and your dosing bottles, you're probably asking yourself, how do I make this stuff? Luckily, this is real easy too. We suggest that you start off with the recommended recipe and then mod it from there. If you want to print something out, the recipe is on our website under the nutrients section of part one. Oh shoot, you know what? We should totally create a little recipe card or sticker that you can even put on your bottles. We'll get on that after the video. If they're ready, take a look in the description below for a link to the recipe card or a sticker. Anywho, let's make some of this stuff. What you need is your two 500 milliliter dosing bottles, some really warmed up RODI water or distilled water, just not boiling, a plastic or paper funnel, which just makes things a little easier, and your salts. In the first bottle, label it as your macros. You can slap one of our stickers on the bottle so you know which one's which. The recipe for the macros bottle, which will be clear when we're done, is as follows. Four teaspoons of potassium nitrate, which is KNO3, one teaspoon of monopotassium phosphate, which is KH2PO4, and six teaspoons of potassium sulfate, or K2SO4. Use your plastic or ghetto paper funnel to slide the fertilizer into the larger chamber of the dosing bottle. The smaller chambers for dosing, we'll talk about that later. Once all the salts are in, pour your really warm water, again not boiling, should be RODI water or distilled water into the larger chamber. Cap it really well and shake the bottle without squeezing it. Once you get it mostly dissolved, unscrew the cap to the larger chamber a little bit just to make sure pressure doesn't build up in the bottle while it cools down. You might notice some crystals gathering at the bottom of the bottle, but that's just the potassium sulfate. That stuff can be a little stubborn and take a bit to dissolve, but it should be ready to go within about 12 hours. We generally make this stuff in the evening and it's ready to dose by the morning. Now we're basically gonna do the same thing with the second bottle. We're gonna label this one micros, and we're going to add one teaspoon of CSM plus B to the larger chamber of that bottle. Add our really warm water, cap tightly, and shake without squeezing. This one should dissolve really quickly and actually turn the bottle brown. This is really nice because we can visually see the difference between the macros, which are clear, and the micros, which are brown, helping us quickly decipher which one is which if we didn't label them. Man, we really need to get some stickers we can send out to you guys. So you can go ahead and slap them on the bottle. We'll do that right after this video. And check that out. You just made yourself your own fertilizer. Okay, so now that you have this stuff in these fancy squirt bottles, Let's talk about how much should we dose? Again, the nice thing about the EI method is the recommended recipe is set in a specific ratio. If the nitrates are where they need to be, then the rest of the nutrients is as well. So all we have to do is keep our nitrates around 20 parts per million and you're golden. The cool thing about the bottle that you've purchased is there's a smaller chamber with really small milliliter readings on it. Take off the cap to the smaller chamber, leaving the larger chamber cap on tightly and squeeze the bottle. The smaller chamber will slowly fill up and you can precisely measure out the milliliters needed to dose your tank. See, we really love these little dosing bottles. For tanks with CO2 injection that are hitting the one point pH drop before the lights come on and keeping it throughout the photo period as we suggested in our CO2 video, we recommend dosing one milliliter per gallon of each bottle to start off. It's also recommended that we dose on alternate days. So Monday, Wednesday, Friday, you dose your macros. Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, you'll dose your micros. This leaves Sunday as a day where we dose no fertilizer and is a perfect time to process our water changes. So for example sake, if you have a 30 gallon planted tank, on Monday, you'll dose 30 milliliters of your clear bottle, the macros. Tuesday, we'll dose 30 milliliters of your micro bottle. Wednesday, we'll dose 30 mils of your macros. Thursday, back to 30 mils of your micros and so on till Sunday. Don't dose on Sunday and process your 50% water change. Oh yeah, more on the water changes to come. Now, if you're not running CO2, you can still dose the EI method. Liebig's law of the minimum still applies. We're just going to dose a lot less as your plant's growth isn't in overdrive. We suggest starting out with 25% of the recommended dosage. Run that for a week and test your nitrates along the way to make sure that they don't slowly climb up above something like 30 parts per million. For example, if you have this 30 gallon tank you'd like to dose, the recommended dosage would be 30 milliliters, but 25% of that would be 7.5 mLs a day. Again, watch your nitrates. If they keep climbing, 
dose less of each bottle per day until you find the correct dosage, which keeps your nitrates at a stable 20 parts per million. Now back to water changes. Regardless of how much you're dosing, it's really important to know that we need to be processing 50% water changes each week when dosing the EI method. This prevents any single nutrient level from building up over time. And this kind of leads us to the question, how do we know if we're even dosing too little or too much? In our experience, there are two allergies that present themselves when dosing the EI method. One is green dust algae, and another is green spot algae. Green dust algae, or GDA, generally presents itself when dosing too much, or our light's par might be too high, or we're not processing 50% water changes and the nitrates are building up. If you see this algae, test your nitrates as they are probably going to be higher than 20 parts per million. We suggest that you remove a little water from your tank, scrub down all your glass and hardscape, and once the algae is in the water column, process a 75% water change, sucking it all out. Do this for a couple of weeks while keeping your nitrates around the desired level of 20 parts per million, and the green dust algae should subside. Once it does, you can go back to processing your regular 50% water changes weekly. Now, if you're starting to see green spot algae, or GSA, there's a chance you're probably dosing too little. GSA generally presents itself in low phosphate environments. If you check your nitrates level, you're probably hitting rock bottom. If they're at zero, you need to be dosing more micros and macros each day. Your plant mass could be so dense that the plants could be growing so quickly that the one milliliter per gallon could just not be cutting it. It is just a recommended starting dosage anyways. This situation generally presents itself in tanks that are CO2 injected, have a densely planted tank, and are under lights which are generally high par values that could be 120 plus. Again, just some signs to watch out for. Another sign could just be that the plants are showing signs of deficiencies. But as we've learned with Liebig's Law of the Minimum, we cannot just dose a single nutrient. We have to increase our fertilization table to make sure our plants have everything they need at all times. Well, that's about it for the EI method. Not bad, huh? Let's recap. The EI method is the least expensive, yet most effective, and most customizable fertilization method in the hobby. What makes it so inexpensive is one EI kit that costs around $35 could last you two to three years on a 30 gallon aquarium. What makes it so effective is that it's based off of Liebig's Law of the Minimum, which teaches us that we need to provide all the nutrients a plant could need at all times, otherwise plant growth will be halted. And it's the most customizable fertilization method because we get to decide which of the compounds we put into the mix. If your fish are producing lots of nitrates, put less nitrates in the mix. If your massive Amazon sword is super potassium hungry, then add more potassium sulfate. It's no wonder why a lot of professional aquascapers use this method for fertilization, especially when paired with a high CEC substrate like an aquasoil. EI kits and 500 milliliter dosing bottles can be purchased on Nylock G's website. And make sure you use the code ASG10 at checkout to receive 10% off your order. Follow the recipe on our website or the recipe cards in the description. For high par CO2 injected tanks, dose one milliliter of either the micro or macronutrient each day and alternate the micros and macros leaving the seventh day, a rest day, for water changes. If you're not injecting CO2, start with 25% of the recommended dosage. Whether or not you have a high or low energy setup, or whether or not you're injecting CO2, just try to keep your nitrates around 20 parts per million and you'll be good. If you're seeing green dust algae or GDA, you might be dosing too much. If you see green spot algae or GSA, you might be dosing too lean. And make sure you're processing a minimum of 50% water changes weekly to ensure not a single nutrient builds up. And if you start seeing a little algae, kick it up to 75% weekly. That's it. You're going to have nutrients covered for years to come and feel like a chemist along the way. If you haven't done so already, check out our website at aquascapeguide.com for more information on the science behind aquascaping. And also, don't forget to check out the other YouTube videos we have on our channel. Alright, I've got to go mix up a batch of ferts. Later, scapers!